Hello everyone, how's it going? In this video, I wanted to show you how to make this exact scene. It's an extremely simple one. We will be starting off with a SketchUp warehouse model, which I will link down below. We will be mostly doing the lighting, improving the materials, doing the whole of the environment, and showing you a couple of extremely simple and very effective tips and tricks. This is targeted towards Blender beginners, so follow along. As you could see, we are starting from a model made by Desire Space, provided by Desire Space. It's called Lake House 2 by Kojiro Sasaki. And if you are watch, if you are using SketchUp, feel free to watch his own video about this specific link down below as well. So the first thing you want to do is go ahead and import the model by Colada or the SketchUp file format inside of blender refer back to my older videos to see that for the most part i covered it a couple of times first thing you want to do is select everything go into edit mode with everything selected press p do a separate by material to separate all of the objects based on material and choose material and choose any object and press select linked by material that way blender will select all of the objects that share the same material making it way easier and more organized as you could see i have already done this beforehand now for the materials i kept them for the most part extremely simple using these same textures like we have here for the glass panels we have a simple glass material with a tiny bit of tint as you could see here for the other glass we have simply the transmission set to one and the roughness set to zero same thing goes for the wood for the wood i am using the texture that came with the actual model if you import as glada it will come with some textures and organized materials to add some more details i plugged the texture into the a color wrap and plugged it into a bump node and into the roughness for the steel and metal i went ahead and added a musgrave texture which i plugged into a color ramp and used it for the roughness in a gray metallic material with the metallic set to one as you could see in front of you use the color wrap to keep it extremely simple and subtle we only want to see it in the highlights same thing you know at this point is extremely repetitive as you could see i mostly kept the materials that came with the sketchup model and where i needed details i simply added the same texture into the roughness and the bump now the terrain is slightly different i used some materials from quicksold bridge as you could see we want a beach scene so we actually have we need some type of sand in this case i prefer this type of very detailed and displaced sand called thai beach sand go ahead and import it i already did assign it into your material and let's go ahead and check the setup which is extremely extremely simple a simple albedo map plugged into the color socket roughness plugged into the roughness socket a normal map and a bump map with the setup right in front of you extremely simple extremely self-explanatory we also have a displacement map and with everything make sure to have enough geometry just to displace as you can see in front of you now we want to be using cycles with the gpu compute and make sure to have the experimental feature set why because we need adaptive subdivision which only comes with this now what does adaptive subdivision do it practically tessellates the mesh based on pixels how much pixels it takes up on the screen right more of that later on now what we want to do is add a camera and position it somewhere a bit cinematic think about a good source of uh, composition which makes the house look more interesting and think about how the lighting will react we want an aspect ratio of one 
which is why I'm setting the resolution to 2000 pixels by 2000 pixels. We can go ahead and play with the focal length. For exteriors, I like to go ahead and go with a slightly wider focal length to add a bit of nice distortion. Position it where it makes sense, use the shift Y in order to avoid a wrong axis and very bad ugly distortion. Now for the lighting, we're going to use a sky. For in this case, we want a sky of 3 p.m. summer, roughly 4 p.m. of summer. So go ahead and play around with the sun elevation and with the sun rotation as well until you get the result that you like. There are no rules here until you see something that you like. And in my case, I like to add a lot of ozone and a higher altitude, even though it does not make sense, but it pushes the blue tint way better. Now, as you could see, we already have our nice details here, which will be emphasized when we enable the subdivision, adaptive subdivision. In this case, I'm using a tessellating scale of four pixels. Now, you have some more information about it down below, which is where we have the viewport. The same thing goes for the beach ground material. And as well, instead of that, we can go ahead and just import a bunch of scans of beach formation into Blender and do it. But in my case, for the tutorial, I have just used a simple displacement. In the thumbnail image, I've used some 3D scans assets. However, if I want to do that, it's extremely simple. You won't really benefit from it. Now make sure in these settings in the surface to be using displacement and the bump. Otherwise, you wouldn't uh, the displacement wouldn't actually displace anything. There wouldn't be any deformation. Now at this point, we need some form of uh, greenery, some tropical assets that will be uh, that will be placed from the botanic add-on. I prefer to not use it. I prefer to use the same botanic assets, but from the asset browser which gives me a bit more control and I can drag and drop whatever I want it. Now for these first two trees, I want them for the sake of shadows. As you could see, we can see them, but we can see their shadows in order to separate the foreground from the house, which is our main subject. I also want a small shadow on the house, which you can see here, extremely subtle as well, gives some nice stripes, adds a lot of nice, uh, uh, contrast to the image and at this point you can go ahead and spend as much time as you want adding actual assets now the asset this time i'm using botanic use whatever you have access to use max tree if you have access to that use uh, baga assets from uh, if i remember correctly that's the name use any assets that works for you or you have access to even make your own assets I will hopefully be showing you how to do that using Blender and Speedtree in the future. We also want to add some type of beach grass or weeds. I know that this does not belong in this biome, but it looks okay, so that's mostly what I care about. I like to go ahead and uh, make the saturation and the value a bit lower, so it looks a bit more dry and not like an actual meadow play around with the hue, give it a bit more yellowness and redness to make it look a bit more dry. Now we have that going on. What we need to do is scatter this a bit more. So duplicate the same one, scale it, rotate it. It looks like a totally different tree. We have around five or six variation that come in the add-on. I wish we had more, but in this case, it's more than enough since we have a very small area to cover. And we will be, regardless, using just a couple of options here. I am doing this uh, a bit strategically, adding them in places where I don't have any details. As you could see, you know, this scene was made in like one hour, two hours max for the first one, which was mostly spent on improving the materials and just going ahead and separating everything, uh, redoing some geometry if needed. We know here there are no rules, add whatever assets you have, add whatever details you have. I mean, you could add a ball here and sculpt around it to emulate someone playing like volleyball. Now, we also want a background, which is why we're going to Unsplash and downloading any source of sunset sky 
for midday now make sure that it relatively matches your lighting setup so the same time of day and the same rotation in my case i didn't find anything for the same rotation but i have used a panorama that i had access to i would have linked it down below but i lost the access since i have this back from around five or six years ago it, it, was, it was a free one actually i think you can find it on gumroad if you look for it now add it as a plane your same textures it comes with the right aspect ratio but our lighting now seemed extremely horrible which is because this is the plane is casting shadows which is why you're going to go to the ray visibility and disable everything except the camera plug the texture into the emission and start playing with it improve the strength of the emission you could add a hue saturation node in between to toggle with the colors a bit play with the colors you can add a brightness and you can even rotate it to slightly correct the perspective until it makes a bit more sense in this case i rotated it on the y-axis now as you could see we need a good sort of transition between everything which is why i'm going to add a play a cube here which is I'm going to add a sort of quote-unquote volumetric setup in order to blend the background with our with our mid-ground and foreground better. Now, for the group, add an emission, but don't plug it into the surface, plug it into the volume, and give it an extremely subtle effect. As you can see here, 0.001 is more than enough. And it adds the feel of haze. So, it fades to the distance we don't have an extremely sharp background which wouldn't make sense you know for something that's like five kilometers or six kilometers away even more now if we toggle this you could see the difference but at the same time i actually want to add some actual atmosphere in front of the camera near the camera which is why i'm doing the same thing adding a cube but this time i won't be doing it with the emission but just by using a simple principled volume and just adding some uh, adding some uh, bit of anisotropy and giving it an extremely small density in this case i won't add in emission since we don't need it now keep this subtle we don't want to overdo it it will give us some nice type of warmness if we play with the color inside of the shader as you can see, I went with a slightly warmer color. Now at this point, it's just playing around, make sure that it's subtle. We don't want any type of stylized imagery here. Now you could do that, but it requires a bit more skill and visual judgment. At this point, we have a practically finished scene. We can go ahead and add our depth of field, extremely simple as well, just to blur out the grass near the camera. And enable all of our subdivision if needed for the preview just to recheck if the strength is more than enough at this point you can use agx or filmic play with the exposure with the gamma with the look and with the curves now i don't recommend that you do this inside of blender however i wanted to keep this strictly inside of blender so generally my advice would be go ahead and just export this out as a jpeg or as an exr or as a png whatever fits you Again, we have a video for that as well. And just, you know, go to town. Try a couple of options. Add some bloom inside of Photoshop, inside of Blender. Just post-process it. Post-processing can take a relatively uninteresting image and turn it into a very moody and source of appealing to look at. Now, as always, the add-on here is called Photographer, by the way. I get this question around a hundred times since I have opened the channel. So the name of the add-on is called Photographer add-on. I believe it's the fifth version. Now, I like to render at 4K at least. Make sure that I am not using the noise threshold, but using the samples, since I know how to eyeball this a bit well. After which, go ahead and render out your image. Now, one thing I want to mention as well is that a lot of people tend to actually follow the tutorials that I put on, which makes me extremely, extremely happy. 
You know, I have never imagined that within four months of doing YouTube, I would have around 3,500 subscribers, which is why I would like to add a section in which I will be going ahead and showcasing the works of people. This one is made by Wine Vicent. I am extremely sorry if I didn't pronounce your name correctly. Please follow this tutorial and he went way too overboard with it in a very positive way. He made it way better than the tutorial itself. It looks extremely interesting. It looks a project worth showing to people. He's already professional. In all honesty, his art is great. He has 500 posts, so plenty to look at. Check him down below as well. And if you send me the results, I will make sure to sort so share it around on my story or if it's extremely nice i will be going ahead and dropping it in the video like here since you're in instagram feel free to follow me on alternative vision studio where i share some more professional work of mine and personal project now hopefully you learned or thing or two and until next time take care and enjoy yourself out